Hey everyone, I'm Scott Cunningham, aka Scott C Business, and today we're here with Dennis Omer, who is the uh, head of ecosystem growth there. Can you just tell us uh, a little bit about yourself to start off? Sure. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Dennis. I'm the head of ecosystem growth at uh, Kyber Network, and uh, well, I studied uh, economics back in I don't know, like a, more than a decade ago, and then as soon as I graduated, I went straight into finance, and I spent ten years at a financial data company called Thomson Reuters. And around 2016, I came across a Reddit post that mentioned Ethereum, and it was like a you know today I learned and it talked about how Ethereum was this uh, Turing complete like supercomputer. And that was when I basically went down the rabbit hole. And since then, it's consumed my life 24-7. Like, it's shocking. It, it feels like it's just like being in a bubble all day, you know, with crypto Twitter. And and in the meantime, in 2016, as soon as I got into it, I did my MSc in digital currency from the University of Nicosia. It was the only, ma it's, well, still is the only master's in the world where you can, you know, really learn about blockchain technology in terms of, what it means for finance, for law, for developing countries, like consensus mechanisms, and that was awesome. And um, in 2016, that's when I started buying Ethereum as well, ETH. And from there, I really liked projects like Maker, and then I came across Kyber Network. And that's when I really liked uh, what they were doing. And over time, I kind of just transitioned into that team because I, I really enjoyed like you know meeting up with them in conferences and seeing how they approach decentralized liquidity in ethereum so over time i just joined them and that's what i've been doing i guess almost two years now and you know i, I love working in this space and meeting these really cool people and building these awesome crazy products and that that's basically my story that's awesome that's awesome so what does your uh, day look like on an average day these days um, well, I'm, I'm, well, as, as head of ecosystem growth, I'm always looking at where we can actually bring that growth from. And over the last two years, we realized that, okay, we can build a, an exchange that swaps one token to another, and that's great. Traders can go there. But beyond that, this simple use case of converting one token to another is so powerful in so many different use cases. You can plug that into like storefronts so that the, the storefront owner can accept any token and that gets converted to the specific token that he wants. Or you could plug it into these like completely on-chain decentralized financial or like uh, dApps where they're all connected to each other. And, and as they grow, our volumes kind of grow with it. So that's why I spend most of my time looking for new uh, dApps within this space. And that's and that's that just means like just following ex like what's happening on in hackathons on crypto Twitter on Reddit. Just being on top of what's happening in that scene and seeing as soon as a new company comes out, oh, would they like to use this liquidity that we kind of provide? Um, yeah. And apart from that, I'm just uh, working on different initiatives. Like within Kyber, we have a lot of things going on. We have a new huge. Uh, update coming soon and I can talk about that later but just my basic day is just spent around this stuff awesome awesome so for people who don't have uh, a full grasp or don't know a lot about Kyber Network can you give a brief introduction to what that is yeah so you can think of Kyber Network at a very simple level it just lets you swap one token to another but the beauty of it the way how it does is it has these set of smart contracts that bring the liquidity side, and this can be any, like so many different kinds of sources. It can be project teams that want to provide liquidity for their own tokens. It's Kyber itself. You can also plug in different external like exchanges like Uniswap and Oasis. So you have the supply side. And on the other side, using all this liquidity are multiple different wallets and exchanges and DeFi dApps and games. So it's a real, Kyber is just kind of this ecosystem of different dApps like being fed this instant guaranteed uh, liquidity at a, at a very simple level. I guess it's some, that's how you would describe it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, for people who are a little bit more tech savvy, crypto savvy, do you want to talk a little bit more about the like development side of uh, Kyber? Uh, yeah, I mean, we launched um, early 2018. And there we were just a 
just purely an exchange. We call it like KyberSwap, where you could, it's super easy. You just uh, choose from a drop down what token you have. On the other side, you can choose out of 70, 80 different tokens, put the amount, and it's going to give you like, okay, this is how much you're going to get. And it just does the whole transaction completely on chain. And that's when afterwards we, after throughout 2018, we got more wallets on board. And then 2019, we saw that DeFi was exploding. So we started like integrating into DeFi dApps like uh, Nuo and InstaDapp and DeFi Saver. So that's basically, you know, how did it come over the time? And now we're also moving to this new, yeah, I'll say that for later, I guess. And uh, sure. so that's, that's how it is at a, at a development level. Okay, yeah, and um, so what problem did Kyber set out to solve in the uh, in the space? Um, we see ourselves as a kind of like an the oil in the engine, and the engine is Ethereum, and there's all these these hundreds of different tokens, and sometimes it can be siloed. So what we're saying is here's a set of smart contracts in the middle, just send it, and it just spits out whatever is needed by that specific DeFi use case or whatever use case you want. So we basically allow you to accept any token. And our, and our slogan was, um, what was it? Oh my God, I can't believe I actually forgot it. Uh, it something like any token anywhere, something like that. You know. So it was like, do you have ETH, but you want to spend it, but the app needs, for example, DAI? Just send it as ETH, and Kyber will do it on chain. And, and that's that was another differentiator for us was that we were completely on chain, as in everything is completely transparent. The ex the execution of the trade happens on chain, and then it gets settled on chain as well within one transaction. And that's why I think it's been adopted by so many different DApps, as opposed to some of these more off-chain uh, projects where you don't exactly know how is it. The matching is done. Is it in your favor or not? Whereas here you can see that out of all the different sources, the smart contract is only going to go and pick the best priced kind of liquidity provider for that trade. And for every trade, it just does that again. It looks at the best priced one for the end user and just pulls that in. So it's like this beautiful system like that. Yeah, yeah, that's really awesome. And um, being someone myself who uses a lot of different blockchain social platforms, I end up earning a ton of different, yeah. like small amounts of different currency. And yeah. um, Kyber has been, you know, a huge help for just consolidating all that into one crypto rather than, you know, signing up for like 15 different exchanges that all have, you know, because like, these aren't super, super popular coins too. So they're all on different exchanges and it's just a huge hassle. Whereas I can just really easily send it to Kyber and get it in whichever crypto I want. Um, so how did Kyber get its name? <laughs> uh, well, Ky K Kyber, what a Kyber crystal is, is the energy force that powers a lightsaber in Star Wars. It's this kind of source of power. So that's where it gets his Kyber name from. And the Kyber network, K and CR token thing is like Kyber network crystal, basically. Mm. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> and at, at um, we had those as little sweets as well, like little crystal like sweets. Oh, okay, sweet, sweet. Um, so, so you mentioned earlier uh, um, some of the big updates that are in the works for Kyber. Do you want to talk about that now? <laughs> um, yeah. So, until now, in in every trade, uh, the way it worked was zero point twenty five percent of each trade, so one quarter of one percent was paid as a fee by the liquidity side, the market maker side, and that was paid in KNC, which then got burnt. So for each trade, 0 0.25. So you can imagine in like hundreds of millions of dollars of volume, that 0 0.25 that keeps getting burnt kind of accumulates. And that's how KNC kind of gets its value because it's a depreciating token over time. There's less of it, supply is dropping. So the, it kind of appreciates in price. Now we're going to try something radically different where instead of the market maker paying 0.25%, the model is that 0.25% gets taken out of the trade, so out of the end user, and it gets distributed into three different things. First, it comes to the market maker as a rebate, so he can get 0 0.3, he can get like a third of it or a quarter of it of some amount of it as, as a reward for actually providing the liquidity. Uh, KNC holders will be rewarded as well 
and all they have to do is just stake their KNC and participate in the governance of this mechanism and they get rewarded. And thirdly, part of that KNC is burnt. So we have a burning, we have rewards to KNC stakeholders and we have uh, rebates. And this basically, this whole thing is actually decided on, governed on by the KNC stakeholders. So every epoch, every two weeks, for example, they can actually vote and say, okay, let's slightly increase the rebate and then provide a bit more liquidity. Let's slightly decrease the burn rate and they can actually make tweaks to the system. So we come to this, what we believe is like a super efficient and equilibrium system. And the beauty of it is that before we were taking this K and C, now we've changed it and we're actually collecting it in ether. And that's super powerful that each unit of KNC is actually collecting Ether and is not collecting KNC. Because if it is collecting KNC, it would either have to be some kind of inflationary system where we're minting more KNC, and that's how some other projects in the space have decided to do it, or we, we wouldn't have um, that kind of mechanism built out over there. So, so we're pretty excited about it. We're calling it Catalyst, Kyber Catalyst, and it's coming end of Q2, hopefully. Awesome, awesome. So I guess instead of um, you know relying on holding it and, and waiting for it to burn and the value to go up, now people will also sort of, in a way, receive little payouts, and that just gives more incentive for people to participate. I definitely need to get some more uh, some more Kyber <laughs> myself. Um, yeah. So so where do you feel that the Kyber network fits in with other similar um, like swap uh, exchanges, like Uniswap or like Simple Swap? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess we we are comparable to Uniswap in the sense that we're both completely on chain, and Uniswap's approach is super simple, automated market system where the price is determined by the order size, and that determined that goes up or down the curve to determine where it will be. So it's a completely hands off approach. Whereas in Kyber, you still have the option to use an automated market maker, but if you don't, you can have your own kind of manual market maker where you're more reactive. You're not stuck on this curve, but you can actively rebalance from Binance if you have to or whatever. It's up to you to manage your own kind of uh, system. So that's one difference uh, with Uniswap. And I guess Kyber is slightly more versatile in the sense of because it can accept many different kinds of liquidity, it can actually accept Uniswap's liquidity as well. So Uniswap is actually feeding its pro its liquidity to Kyber. And if, if uh, Uniswap is the best priced um, liquidity provider for any given trade, then that you know kind of fulfills the trade. So maybe 25% of our volume actually comes from Oasis, which is Maker's kind of DAI liquidity solution. And I think one tenth comes from Uniswap. So okay. So they're different, but they're still kind of interconnected in a way as well. We're still kind of, you know, there is some, I don't know if you call it synergy, but we are making use of them as well. So the interesting thing was during Black Thursday, I don't know, like two weeks ago, when the whole markets crashed and even um, some exchanges, I kind of stopped. But Kyber, some reserve manager, some liquidity provider said it's too volatile for me. I'm stepping out. But because we were connected to Uniswap, we always had that kind of guaranteed liquidity coming in from there as well. You know, and when it is coming from Uniswap, there is no 0.25% that's taken because it's like a pure, we don't want to impose another extra cost on it because the user could have just gone to Uniswap. So it's the same as collecting from Uniswap as it is from Kyber at the end of the day, in the worst case. That's good. That's good. It's sort of just like a contingency if you uh, lack the liquidity otherwise. Yeah. So that's that's good that you guys kind of uh, have those reserves. Um so where do you see Kyber Network going in the next year and then uh, like ideally in the next five years if you guys are looking that far ahead? Yeah. Um, I think we see a lot of growth in the DeFi space in the last year. We've grown a lot with it. We've seen like, at least from our part, like um, almost a dozen different dApps come in like continuously use Kyber's liquidity and they make up for... I don't know if it's like around 20, 25% maybe of Kyber's overall volume. So we expect that to keep growing because there's a lot of innovation happening there and it's kind of easy now to just pull in different DeFi dApps and 
create something completely new, you know, like I, or sometimes I show the example of Diversify, which was using margin trading, uh, using uh, Fulcrum in the background, and then Fulcrum is building its margin trading positions from Kyber, and Kyber gets its liquidity from three, four different sources. So suddenly you have this chain within one transaction of so many crazy little things happening to build something new, you know. So we, we expect that to, con you know, carry on growing for the next year. And if it keeps growing at this stage, I mean, I, I'm sure like within five years, some of more conventional finance will shift into this space as well. They're going to be like, okay, here's here's a system, an alternative, where there is no three-day settlement waiting time. Everything's transparent. Everything's instant. And I can tailor specific solutions just exactly to my own need, you know, and like true USD now is like the fourth largest crypto. So you are seeing that kind of base being built for us to be able to build much more like, let's say, se like serious, not serious, but more mature products in four or five years time, you know, because we can see this technology is, is amazing, right? So we expect it to keep spreading, keep being adopted gradually. And within five years, I expect this to be much, much further down the line. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Um, so why did you guys decide to go with Ethereum for like uh, like building on that? Um, well, we, we liked it at a, at a fundamental level, like the whole concept of it made sense. And many of us like had been involved with Ethereum since 2016. So I could see that it wasn't just that it was technically sound, but the ecosystem was kind of growing much faster than anything else. It kind of, it was super absorbent. It was just pulling it. And, and I remember 2006, it was so basic. There was almost no dApps. And then 2017 was the year where all these different ICOs collected multiple year runways so they could go and execute on those ideas. 2018, we started to see them come online and then Kyber came online and so many different ones. And then 2019, we actually saw the layer being built on top of that as well. So we know there's tremendous growth potential here. You know, I go to so many different hackathons and I can see like hundreds of developers working on specifically Ethereum uh, problems or Ethereum, you know, brainstorming on it. And I haven't seen that in other ones and because I haven't. I've just said I don't have the time to expend like so, our energy in so many different things. You know? Although we did look into EOS, for example, we built a bridge between Ethereum and EOS, and kind of some team like kind of had this version of Kyber on on EOS, but it didn't really catch on in terms of volumes. So you know we were more than happy to work with Ethereum, and in the future, if Ethereum for some reason doesn't scale up or E2.0 is way behind, and something else comes that proves that it's as a smart contract platform is just as viable then we would consider it. We're not like complete maximalists. You have to go with reason. Whatever makes sense, you know, we will follow it. But right now Ethereum is, you know, where it's at, you know, from our perspective. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. I feel like um, Ethereum is kind of the enterprise chain as it is right now today. Um, so that's everything that I have to ask you. Where can everyone go to learn more about Kyber? Uh, well, you can go to our website, kyber.network, or you can even go to our exchange uh, front-end, KyberSwap. And we also have a Discord channel as well that's pretty active and a Telegram one as well. And, of course, on Twitter at kyber.network. Awesome, awesome. And is there anything else that you'd like to share with the audience before we end this off? Um, I mean, nothing comes to mind. And, you know, thank you for having me on. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I really appreciate you coming on and sharing a little bit about Kyber and uh, what you guys have in the works and what you guys have been up to. I think this will be really, really good for my audience. And I personally use Kyber a lot. So, you know, this was good for me to learn a little bit, too. <laughs> and um, I'll definitely be investing more, especially with uh, the, the changes that you guys are going to be implementing. So for everyone who hasn't tried Kyber, check it out. It's really, really simple and easy to use for people who do use Kyber. Uh, let us know what you think about uh, the upcoming updates and everything. Let us know what you think about this in the comments below. And again, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, and thanks for having me and thanks for the show. It's super interesting and you know, look forward to your continuing work. Awesome. All right. Cheers.